Let's welcome Supriti and David and enjoy the talk. Oh, hello, everyone. <laughs> hello, everyone. My name is Supriti. I work as a software developer at SUSE. And uh, my colleague David is also a software developer at SUSE. Uh, I have been working on NFS Ganesha for around one year now, and David here is a Samba contributor for a long time. Today we want to talk about uh, how Samba and NFS Ganesha work together with Ceph. So today's agenda is very simple. We are trying to find answer for three very simple questions. Why, what, and how? Uh, why are we talking about Samba and NFS Ganesha with respect to CephFS? Uh, what does Samba and NFS Ganesha looks like? What is the architecture? And finally, how these two gateways fare with respect to a native CFFS client. Uh, so uh, I'm sure most of the people are aware about the Ceph architecture. <coughs> so Ceph is basically a distributed storage system. And you can access the most basic layer RADOs using different interface. And one of them is CFFS. Uh, CFFS is a POSIX compliant distributed file system. And there are multiple clients through which you can use CFFS. One is kernel client. Then there's also a Fuse uh, client, which is not mentioned here. And then there are Samba and NFS Ganesha. So uh, you may ask, why do we need to export CFFS using Samba and NFS Ganesha? because it would make uh, CFFS available to even a wider variety of clients. So let's say if you have a kernel client which is not up to date, so you can't use the latest kernel CFFS client, and then you don't uh, get the advantage of the latest feature from CFFS, but you can still use NFS because almost all the Linux clients suppose, uh, support NFS, then Samba you can re-export CFFS in Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, of course. So uh, now I will be talking more about what is NFS Ganesha. Uh, NFS Ganesha is an open source user space NFS server. It supports multiple file system backends at this point. There's CFFS, there's Rados Gateway, uh, Red Hat's Gluster, IBM GPFS. If you were in this room before for Lizard FS, you may be aware that they are also planning to integrate with NFS Ganesha. But today, we just want to talk about CephFS. Uh, so it's a very simple idea what NFS Ganesha is doing here. Uh, it's basically translating the NFS protocol uh, into the language that the Rados cluster understands. And it's doing so by using the shared library, which is libcephfs. So at Let's say you have two clients. One is NFS, one is a kernel client. And you can mount uh, these two clients, and you see the same file system. Now, uh, we can go in more detail about NFS Ganesha architecture. It's a very uh, modular architecture. So when I said that it supports multiple file system backends, it's possible because it's modular. Uh, we can start from topmost and go down. So at the topmost, we have a network channel. Uh, NFS Ganesha uses TI RPC for all the RPC, for handling the RPC request. Once, uh, so let's imagine you have an NFS client and it sends a request. Then this TI RPC is handling the request. Then it uh, passes this to a duplicate request layer. So what this does is, for example, you have a non-item potent request, like creating a file. And you know that once a file has been created, it cannot be recreated. So instead of talking again to the lower level and reassuring that, OK, should I create the file or not, you just have a cache in between, which makes sure that some response time is better. Then NFS Ganesha also supports uh, RPC sec GSS, which is uh, support for Kerberos. Uh, if we go down, then there's support for NFS version 3 and version 4. Uh, it actually supports PNFS for Gluster also, but we are talking just for CephFS, so I have not included it. Then uh, 
So once NFS client has sent an NFS request, the topmost layer is now handling understanding what the request is, and now it needs to translate that into a language that the file system understands. And that is taken care by the FASAL layer. So FASAL is a common API, and using this API, all the file systems are talking to the NFS uh, topmost layer. And that's why you have multiple backends, because it's just a common API. You use it, and you plug in your backend. And the <coughs> most interesting thing of NFS Ganesha is MD cache, which is metadata cache. So what it does is that uh, with the latest Ganesha version, we have chunked uh, caching, which means that if you are reading a very large file, it will not cache the whole uh, metadata in, but it will cache in chunks so that the read response is faster. And so instead of always talking to the backend CFFS for the request, it will first check in the cache, and then it will talk. So again, the response time should be better. If we see there are two independent modules as well. There's admin dbus and logging. Uh, so using dbus, you can uh, dynamically export and unexport the NFS Ganesha. So if you have a production cluster running and you don't want to stop the cluster, change something in the configuration file, and then restart the cluster, you can take advantage of dbus. So you can dynamically change the configuration. And then there's logging, which is for uh, tracing and debugging. Um, this slide just reiterates the fact that I just said. Now, few key features of NFS Ganesha are that using a single uh, server, you can export multiple file system. At one point, you can export multiple protocols like TCP, UDP. You can also have multiple uh, version of NFS, uh, like NFS version 3, 4. And you don't need to have multiple instances of Ganesha running. You just modify a single config file, and you can use the uh, node. Then it also supports Kerberos authentication. And as I said, using Dbus, you can dynamically export and unexport the entries. Uh, those were the generic NFS Ganesha features. When we talk about CephFS, then there's support for CephX authorization, which means so there are multiple layers of security. You have Kerberos security. Then uh, for CephFS, NFS Ganesha is a client, and there's this layer of security using CephX. Then uh, the other feature which was recently implemented is read delegation which means that the client does not need to talk to the server for every read request. It can just be. So the server gives guarantee the, to the client that if you're reading this file, and unless nobody is writing, you can continue reading. But in case someone is going to write to the file, there's a callback mechanism which makes sure that you don't read the stale data. And uh, it also supports exporting subdirectories, which I think is really important in case you want to have a load balancing or you want to have proper security. So uh, but if we talk about a production setup, then of course, a single server is never a good idea. You have a single point of failure. There's a bottleneck. And because we are re-exporting CFFS, which is a distributed file system, we are not taking advantage of that at all. The solution would be to use some HA solution, which should provide us some load balancing. So when we talk about Linux <coughs> HA, there are two possible solutions. One is active passive, and another one is active active. So in active passive, uh, if there are n number of servers running, only one is actively <laughs> serving the clients. In case the active server goes down, then the other server becomes active. But the new server does not guarantee that it knows anything about the client. So you are, so we do provide availability, but there's no guarantee that it will be consistent. Uh, so uh, the Linux HA provides a virtual IP. So you provide a virtual IP for the cluster of NFS Ganesha nodes that you have. And 
NFS client mounts using this virtual IP. In case the active node goes down, then the virtual IP also migrates. And for the client, it does not matter. It's still connected to NFS Ganesha, but it does not know that the Ganesha node has been migrated. Uh, so, in NFS version 3 was a stateless protocol, which means that the server had no idea about the client state. But with NFS version 4, it's a stateful protocol, which means that the NFS server should know um, the logs taken by the client, the files opened by the client. And in that case, if you want to have a active-active setup, so in that case, we need somehow that the new server, which takes over the clients of the failed server, should have information about all the client state. And to achieve that, uh, NFS Ganesha uses, takes advantage of the already clustering solution provided by CFFS. So we have, we are using Rados KV to store the client state. So let's say this server goes down, then the new active, the other active server should take up the, uh, all the existing client of the failed server and it can read up the information from the Rados KV and then it can continue. Of course, there will be some, um, delay in the response time, but that is something we will have to live up with. Now I will hand over to David to talk more about Samba. I must tell you I will be back. So. <laughs> OK, uh, thanks, pretty. Um, so, yeah, hopefully you're also all aware of Samba. Um, yeah, in a nutshell, it's, uh, it does file and print share sharing to, uh, for the most part, Windows clients uh, via the SMB protocol. Um, it handles authentication with, with Windows, with um, Active Directory. Um, it does ID mapping and it can, can act as uh, an Active Directory domain member or uh, more recently a, a domain controller. Uh, the protocol itself, um, it's sort of split uh, between the, the old, ancient, uh, crafty SMB dialect, um, which was yeah, quite complex. It had you know, a bunch of, or a whole heap of commands, subcommands. Um, it did include, um, at least for, for the Linux client side, it included uh, extensions for Unix, which were, were quite helpful. Um, but with uh, Windows Vista, uh, Microsoft sort of made a, a clean break from the, the previous SMB dialect and yeah, brought in SMB2, um, which is, is much more simplified, um, at least initially. It um, yeah, sort of uh, also offered some nice things like um, larger, larger I.O. sizes. Um, also more recently, in that it's, it's still evolving over time, um, uh, there have been some some uh, impressive new features added um, with uh, SMB 3.3.1.1. Uh, we have uh, now so SMB Direct, which is sort of um, RDMA extensions for, for SMB. Uh, Multi-channel, so something close to uh, MPIO with uh, other protocols, uh, with iSCSI or whatever. Uh, witness protocol, so this is then allowing a client to to monitor and receive notifications on the state of a scale-out uh, clustered SMB server. Um, also, the yeah, extensions for uh, encryption. On the client side, uh, we have, or at least alongside Samba, uh, the most common one would, would then be Windows. Um, yeah, one thing worth mentioning is that uh, Microsoft nowadays do a great job in in publishing you know, the entire specifications for the protocol. So it's no longer such a you know, arduous uh, reverse engineering process. Uh, it's all um, done in the open. Uh, Mac OS, um, since Mavericks, I think they've um, used SMB by default. Uh, so also a common client. And uh, with Linux, we have the uh, in-kernel SIFS KO client and uh, SMB client. 
Uh, there's also a, a more recent uh, lib SMB2 uh, from Ronnie, which is interesting. Uh, with Samba or scale out Samba, um, yeah, I think uh, this was initially sort of um, implemented by uh, IBM and, and Cernet, um, but there we had, uh, or we still have, uh, CTDB. So Samba for storing session state uses a, a database which is referred to as uh, TDB, Trivial Database, um, in a clustered setup. Uh, we then obviously need to share this uh, information across uh, nodes participating in the cluster. So we have uh, this uh, CTDB, um, and that handles, so aside from the, the database, it also has um, basically a HA stack bolted on to handle monitoring, you know, election of, of masters, um, failover within uh, the cluster. Um, I think I've sort of run through most of those points, but yeah, this is sort of how we then fit in alongside a, a Ceph cluster. Um, so we have our, our Ceph gateway, um, which again, so similar to NFS Ganesha, we have uh, with Samba a, a, a VFS or uh, a file system abstraction um, where we, we can then just plumb uh, libcephfs directly in there. Uh, that then just translates, or Samba then just acts as a, a translator from um, the SMB IO packets coming in to um, OSD MDS requests, requests at the back end. Um, and yeah, along the side there we have uh, the database for storing persistent state. At this stage, um, with Samba, we have this uh, VFS Ceph uh, backend, I think added by Ink Tank uh, quite a few years ago. Um, so that sort of, yeah, um, plums into most of the hooks that we have in, in the Samba VFS. Uh, it uses um, just static um, CephX credentials to authenticate with the, the Ceph cluster. Um, so at this stage, there's sort of no mapping between uh, users and groups on the, the SMB side and you know, what's used for uh, the Ceph cluster. It uh, supports POSIX ACLs, so um, Samba handles mapping between uh, the NT or Windows NT ACLs and um, POSIX ACLs, and then we just yeah, stamp that attribute onto the, uh, the uh, files and directories. Uh, with CTDB, um, that requires what's called a, a clustered mutex helper. Um, so that's then used for um, yeah, avoiding split, split brain within the cluster. Um, so we have um, sort of just a standalone utility uh, which uses uh, just Rados locks um, on the Ceph cluster. Um, also, Ceph LibRados service integration. So this is yeah, something I'll hopefully um, push upstream soon. Uh, it just allows or um, sees Samba then advertise uh, yeah, the, the availability of the service to uh, the Ceph manager daemon. Uh, for testing, um, there's nothing sort of uh, Ceph Samba specific at the moment um, or integrated. So um, for the most part, I'm just continuing to use um, SMB Torture, which is quite a comprehensive uh, protocol test suite. Uh, with the Linux kernel client, there's uh, the XFS or FS test suite. Um, and interop testing, for the most part, it's sort of more a, a manual process at the moment. But um, yeah, hopefully, we'll, we'll get something more automated. Now on to performance. So we did run some benchmarking for NFS Ganesha and Samba and how it performs with respect to a native uh, CFFS kernel client. So this is what our benchmark setup looks like. So we have five OSD nodes, three monitors, and six uh, OSD daemons per node. And we are using Bluestore. 
uh, and we did run benchmark over 10 clients and each client had 16 cores and 16 gigabytes RAM. Uh, the public network was 10 gigabit per second and cluster network was 100 gigabit per second. Uh, for benchmarking, we are using file. So we are reading, writing to uh, data to a file of a specific size for a specified time. And we are running this uh, benchmarking over the 10 client nodes. And one job type would look something like number of workers. Uh, and for each worker thread, we are running for these possible block sizes and <coughs> we are we did test only for the read write at this uh, stage so at so if we have 10 clients and on each client when we run only single thread then you have like 16 jobs and at max we can have like 160 jobs so for nfs ganesha i used nfs ganesha version 2.5.2 there's already 2.6 tagged upstream, which has quite a few improvements over this version. So you should keep in mind when looking at the output. Uh, Ceph version 12.2.1, uh, we tested with only a single NFS Ganesha server, and we mounted using NFS version 4.0. For my test, I was reading and writing to a one gigabyte file for approximately two minutes. If you see, then uh, first a full disclaimer that I did not disable caching, so the results are very high for both CFFS and Ganesha. Uh, in real life application, I would guess that people would be using caching, so in a way it's okay, but maybe we need to re-benchmark with caching disabled. If you see the output, then for single thread, uh, Ganesha's bandwidth is approximately 80% of what's native CFFS kernel client provides. But as number of threads increases, the performance degrades both for CFFS and NFS Ganesha, but uh, more for NFS Ganesha. Uh, this is a more comprehensive read-write ratio bandwidth comparison for Ganesha and CFFS. So if you look at the first uh, <coughs> data point on x-axis, that is just a single thread and then it's approximately 80% of what CFFS bandwidth is, but then it degrades. So it's obvious that as the worker threads are increasing, a single NFS Ganesha server is going to be a bottleneck. And in that case, we need to have multiple Ganesha servers taking care of multiple clients. Uh, this is the lat latency graph. As you can see, uh, when number of threads increases, uh, Ganesha's latency is, of course, higher. Now I will hand over to David. Um, yeah, so for the Samba results, I, I'll just mention, yeah, that these are, are quite preliminary. So um, I've just been running these, uh, yeah, up to the weekend. So the graphs I'm showing are sort of generated this morning. Um, yeah, I'm running so similar setup to uh, Supriti uh, for NFS. Um, this is just with a, a slightly more recent version of Ceph Luminous. Um, I have uh, Samba 4.6 uh, with uh, three Samba gateways set up, all sort of exposing isolated parts of the uh, CFFS directory tree. Uh, I have uh, op-locks or leases disabled, um, so that's um, currently one limitation of, uh, or one of many limitations of uh, the, the Ceph Samba setup. Um, and I'm using uh, Linux sifs.ko as the, the client um, with a relatively old kernel, but um, this has yeah, a bunch of backports on top, so it's the, the SLE or OpenSUSE Leap kernel. And I'm using the SMB3 3.0 uh, SMB dialect. Um, so in this case, these are sort of the, um, the results I had for, for CephFS, um, aggregator bandwidth across um, all 10 clients. Um, so sort of around 3.5 uh, gigabits per second um, for read and write. Um, 
with uh, the Samba Gateway. Oop, might have gone too far there. Um, so there's, yeah, I think a, a considerable drop in, in throughput. Um, these are a sort of, I should mention, yeah, streaming. Uh, they're all uh, streaming uh, I.O. tests. Um, and then we just have a, a bunch of different um, I.O. sizes, so um, 4K for the, the lower uh, throughput results, um, 1 meg and uh, 4 meg I.O.s, and then we have uh, one worker thread per client of 10 clients, uh, 4 threads or 4 workers, 8 and 16 at the end there. Um, yeah, so that's these are sort of the results I have to to now begin uh, yeah, sort of analysis and determine where the, the existing um, bottlenecks are. But um, at this stage, I think one of the, again, I'm sort of speculating a little without going sort of further into um, the detailed results. But um, yeah, at, at this stage, uh, Samba uses or has a, a synchronous, uh, a fully synchronous um, back end for uh, yeah, dispatching Libs FFS IOs. Um, so I think um, converting that from uh, the synchronous backend to um, something which Samba also offers, which is uh, sort of a, a P thread pool um, for, for local file system IO, um, I think there we'll, we should see a, a significant improvement. Um, the other one was uh, caching or client side caching. Uh, so SMB, the protocol itself, allows for sort of considerable caching and, and notifications of uh, yeah, cache breaks. Uh, so similar to um, CephFS's native uh, cache capabilities flags. Um, so yeah, having some sort of mapping between uh, these two caching mechanisms to then fully allow the, the SIS or SMB client to perform uh, caching would also um, I think significantly improve results there. So now on to uh, yeah challenges and sort of what we're currently working on, where we want to go with uh, with Samba and um, NFS as a, a gateway for Ceph. Um, so at the moment we're sort of focused on um, yeah cross, cross protocol support. Uh, so. Um, I think at the moment um, NFS Ganesha is is missing um, ACL support, so ideally we'd have um, yeah, ACLs on uh, Samba, NFS, and the native CFFS client, all consistent. Um, coherent caching, so this is more just uh, at least uh, the Samba side that then needs to be improved to allow for uh, leasing or SMB oplocks. Uh, with CFFS. Unified authentication. Um, so I think it was VMware um, upstream in Ceph were, were looking at um, adding uh, Active Directory support as a replacement for, or well, as something alongside CephX. Um, if that were to come in, then um, we could look at um, yeah, using basically the, the SMB client uh, Acti Active Directory or Kerberos tickets to then authenticate with uh, that specific user with the Ceph cluster. Um, so that's also something which would be um, nice to have. Async IO at the um, yeah Samba backend. Um, that's one thing I mentioned earlier. I think there we would see uh, considerable performance improvements. Multi-channel support. So this is uh, the the ability to sort of yeah, utilize multiple uh, network interfaces on a, an SMB server and then sort of uh, round robin or fail over between those interfaces. Um, that's not currently fully supported with Samba, uh, but hopefully uh, that will then come soon. Uh, deployment, so at the moment, um, uh, Samba isn't integrated into DeepSea, which is sort of the, the utility we use for deploying a, a Ceph cluster within SUSE. Witness protocol, um, yeah, again, this is very SMB specific, so allowing um, yeah, the Samba or Ceph cluster to notify SMB clients and uh, yeah, sort of balance load across um, the, the SMB gateways would be um, something 
good to have. And finally, um, yeah, the, this uh, replacement for CTDB or potentially using um, the Rados key value store instead of um, a full HA stack uh, would be, I think, a nice uh, simplica simplification for the, the architecture of a, a clustered Samba gateway and um, yeah, uh, something we're, we're looking into. So now NFS future is the last slide. Wow. So, uh, well, so upstream is already have started working on having clustering support in NFS Kanesha with, without using the Linux HA. So it means that there will be support in Ganesha to manage the clients. I think it's more targeted towards using Kubernetes with NFS Kanesha. Then another feature would be to have version 4.1 support, which means PNFS, and as a Librado service integration would also be nice. Thank you. Uh, so, I guess questions now. Yeah. Yes, Owen. Can you repeat the question, sir? So the question is if uh, PNFS is the near future of NFS Ganesha, no? but in Ceph. So, so I can answer for NFS Ganesha. So I would say yes, uh, the upstream community is looking into having PNFS support. Uh, so with Samba, there's, uh, or at least the SMB protocol itself, um, it doesn't have anything similar to, to PNFS, or at least at this stage that I'm aware of. So uh, I think the closest would be uh, multi-channel, so just allowing uh, the clients to sort of utilise multiple connections and, and round-robin or stripe across them, but it's still very different to PNFS. Yes. You, you mentioned the challenges you have, including XCL and all that. Yes. Um, looking wasn't listed there, I think. You have Samba, uh, looking on Samba and looking over NFS, they're not really very compatible. Do you have plan for this? Uh, that's true. Um, that's, uh, I think, another task which oh, needs to be addressed. Oh, sorry. Uh, so the, the question was. Um, yeah, coherent locking between um, both uh, NFS and SMB clients. Um, so at this stage, um, yeah, we sort of support independent, isolated SMB and NFS setups. Um, but yes, uh, locking would be something that um, we'd like to have. Yes. So the question was, um, how close is the uh, VFSF implementation for production use? Um, uh, so uh, I can say that within SUSE, we currently um, provide it as a tech preview for our storage product. Um, I think um, if you're purely using it for, for Samba or to expose Ceph to SMB clients, then um, it's uh, absolutely usable. So we found there have been a few bugs just with sort of certain operations getting through the VFS and hitting the, the local file system, but um, I think most of them are, are fixed. Or, uh, so it's getting there. Um, things like you know, scalable performance, um, that's, uh, that would then be sort of yeah, a bit further out, I think. 
Any other questions? Otherwise, um, yeah, thanks for coming. to the other position this light takes a little bit to then eventually go green. yeah green so during the presentation it should be green yes